Welcome back to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. Welcome you back to Talk of the Town for this Friday, June 11th. I'm Gary Stevens. It is the second Friday of the month, which means in this time slot, we devote a little bit of our attention and questions dealing with matters involving Allegan County. And the two men who represent the Holland area in the uh, in Allegan County are on the other side of our Zoom connection this morning. Board Chairman De uh, Jim Story and former Board Chairman, current Commissioner Dean Kappinga. Gentlemen, good morning and welcome back to WHTC. Morning, Gary and listeners. It's great being here. Good morning, Gary, and all the fine listeners. Uh, WHTC. And if you got a question for either of the uh, chair, uh, uh, the uh, count, uh, the commissioners, Dean Capping, the first voice you heard, Jim Story, the second voice you heard, they'll be happy to answer your question at 616-395-1450, 616-395-1450. This has been something that's been in the works for a while. I think uh, Dean is on this one, if not Jim, dealing with off-road vehicles on on-road county roads uh, I, I, it's gonna be it's gonna happen it's gonna happen tell us all about it i'll let dean take the lead here <laughs> well mr chairman i gladly will but uh, this has been a big journey for the commission and a group of people i mean i think we told you gary that we actually had about 150 people about a month ago come to a meeting and I know that even yesterday we had at least 25 people. I was at a Lake Town meeting this past week. They had about 25 people there. And there has been, I've had more emails on this topic than almost anything we've dealt with, Jim. And I think you'd probably say the same thing. But yesterday was really a big day for um, this topic. We've talked about it for a year, but we actually passed it. And I would tell you, I think, Jim, I'd love to hear just your opinion too. But um, Gary, just so you know that the prosecutor, you know, the sheriff, the road commission, they all got together because they wanted to have a uniform ordinance that would tell all law, enf law enforcement and people where they can and can't drive. Um, the road commission within this, with us saying yes, came up with about 400 miles of roads that they felt weren't safe for ORVs to be on, but there's restrictions as far as to show who can drive, how old they have to be to drive, what do they have to wear, where can they go? So I, I'm very happy and pleased that we've actually passed this yesterday uh, through your leadership, Jim. And I think it's a, just a big day with so many people within the county to think of 19 of our 24 townships wanted it, to think of 63 counties already passing this. I think it's just an important thing that we did this and I'm happy that it was passed. I'm glad I could vote for it. And I was very much in, in, for this. Um, and it's just, a I was happy to get it behind us, Jim. <laughs> I think it was a positive thing for the county. Oh, it definitely is a positive thing for the county. And uh, of course I joined with uh, Dean and the majority in voting for the, uh, for the ordinance uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one is, uh, as Dean said, many, many counties in Michigan already permit these uh, ORVs on the county roads. Our road commission and our prosecutor and our, our sheriff worked with the advocates. And that's the part that I really wanna highlight here. The advocates weren't one of these, you know, one and done, we're gonna throw tents up in your hearing room and do protests outside if you don't uh, do it our way. They went through all the townships that would permit them to make a presentation over the last year to talk about the ordinance. They worked with the sheriff, they worked with the prosecutor, they worked with the road commission to develop an ordinance they all could live with. It was a tremendous demonstration of very positive citizen action uh, to bring to the board. So it was, it was, it was an easy vote, frankly. Uh, and, and then the other thing I want to say, I don't want to get, you know, take too long, is people didn't really talk about, but this is an economic issue too as well. You know, people like to use, more and more people like to use these ORVs from grandmas we heard from yesterday, you know, all the way, you know, down to some young people. And they want to do it responsibly. 25 mile speed limit, you got to stay on the right hand side of the road. I, I just think it's a, it's a very positive thing for our county. And people, one commissioner I talked in a Northern Michigan County said that after he operated, he had a, uh, a party store or a convenience store that he operated up there. And he, and he wasn't initially for uh, ORVs on county roads, but after it passed, he sold something like 600 ORV stickers for his county just through his store. 
that's economic activity. And that puts people to work. Uh, when the image of an ORV in certain areas lends one to think uh, you gotta, they're, they're, they're using it to maybe get to a deer blind if they're a hunter or they're maybe using it to get from one part of the farm area to another. But am I simplif oversimplifying that in terms of some of the purposes that why these ORV uh, uh, on area roads need to be passed or are just a couple of uh, examples? So I think it's a couple, of, a couple of examples. I got a kick out of it, Jim. Yesterday within our 25 people, there were two moms that were going, they had signs up and Jim said, come on forward, we wanna see what your signs say. And they were that, let us drive our kids around on our golf carts. We enjoy doing this. It's, it's a great family thing that we enjoy doing together. And then we heard from other people that, like in Hopkins, this has been a Hopkins ordinance that they've allowed for quite some time. They go down to the, to the restaurant uh, to get something to eat. They go to the coffee shop, uh, but that's a very rural area. But um, it's, it's to the gun blind, but it's also just for Joe Ride and the dirt roads back in East Saugatuck where I'm at. And I see him back there. The other thing, too, is that um, this, is, this is more of a, I, I don't want to say a seasonal thing, but yet, you know, certain vehicles probably shouldn't be on area roads. I'm right. thinking snowmobiles. Is that right. covered? Uh, not by this ordinance. Okay. No. You know, so you can't go, you know, you know, hopping in the sled. Not even the one horse sleigh. No, no that doesn't. That, we're talking about motorized vehicles. <laughs> Gary, watch it. You're dating yourself. That's all right. Uh, it, 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 look, listen, I'm talking on June 11th, not December 11th, when we talk about one horse like. Uh 616-395-1450. We have a question for Allegan County Commissioners, Jim Story and Dean Kappinger. They'll be happy to chat with you about this. Uh, the next topic is a refresh tour of county billings. In other words, you know, because of... Uh, the outbreak, uh, we don't know what the buildings look like anymore or what? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this. Well, uh, go ahead. Young, he, uh, he suggested that because we've been separated because of COVID for 14 months or so, that it would be a good idea, A, to see what uh, has been going on in our building since we haven't been in them. Uh, you know, uh, until recently. And also very much important is that we invite the county elected officers and our county judges, elected judges to meet with us for uh, a social time, so to speak. We posted it as a meeting. So it, it, we met the technical requirements of the open meeting. Okay. Uh, well, we have some issues. Exactly. But yeah. uh, we did that. Uh, my, my take on it was that uh, you know, we have a lot of excess space in our county buildings right now, um, and that we have done a great job of continuing county business during the COVID. Okay. It's, uh, but now yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we got to, right? Oh, I yeah. was. Yeah, go ahead. Jim, for some reason, you're getting frozen on that. Yeah. No. <laughs> I can give it a try, Gary. Uh, go. Uh, by, by the way, uh, we'll talk about... <laughs> what we just have experienced with Mr. Story in a few moments. Gentlemen, I do want to get to a call. Let's get to it right now. Good morning. You're on the line with Commissioner Story and capping up. Hey, good morning. Hey, I just want to go back to uh, the original ORV thing for a second, and I'll hang up. But I'm wondering if there's going to be a printed uh, brochure or something about where you can and can't drive or where you would get the information on what roads you can and can't drive. And I'll hang up and listen. Thank, Thank you. you very much for the call. And it's a good point, uh, not only printed, but also online too. I, I think I heard that. And I hope I'm coming through. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, it takes effect July 1st mm -hmm. and the road commission will post uh, on its website, the roads that are not allowed. Uh, we are going to work uh, to, Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, go yeah, ahead. He was going to say, we are going to work on it. And Jim, thanks for bringing that up yesterday. We're going to actually have on our map the locations where you can and can't go. And that was a great, that's Jim's idea. But um, just go to the Road Commission website. They'll have all the roads that you cannot go on it in for the ORVs. And that's the best way to go, a listener. And we'll, we'll also be on a map that we're producing 
for our county to show where you can and can't go. And it'll be available through county offices and probably distribute it to uh, local municipalities as well to make to give yes, the, the furthest outreach, especially the 19. Yeah. Am I right saying 19 municipalities wanted this yes. in the county? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, that's not, well, it's, it's, it's almost points of, well, you two or three that, well, I don't know, how, how many are there in any way in the, in the county? Four. Okay, so, you know, you other five, uh, you get it right. anyway, even though you didn't want it. Uh, 616-395-1450, 616-395-1450. The issues we've had with Board Chairman Jim Story is the next topic I want to bring up. The board has created two work groups. Now, one is for water resource quality, and that's fine. The other, a broadband action group, and oh boy, if we need Exhibit A on this, we have Exhibit A with Mr. Story right now. <laughs> yeah, I have Exhibit A. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> right. Well, tell us about the tell us about these groups, Jim. Oh, take that back. Dean, tell us about these groups. <laughs> I don't know why Andrew's going to have to, gonna have to ride this one. I'm afraid. <laughs> Well, it's, it's an ever cry. And I think the best description is, is that we had um, Bill Brown from the tech center or from the um, schools in Allegan, and he was spending $35,000 a year to simply get communication to the students that were at home. Imagine that. And then if you, if you are in our rural areas, listeners, there are so many students and people that simply cannot communicate, cannot go online, cannot see what's going on, and imagine, imagine the virtual issues that are going on in the school systems right now, let alone the people who simply can't find out information, vital information about, about things that we need in society. You know, so this broadband thing has been hit to us for years. And um, as many of the listeners know that with the COVID funds that are being allocated, we're, we're supposed to get some $23 million. And a big topic that's come up is broadband. And um, we, you know, it's, it's, everyone has been yelling it loud and clear, as well as commissioners, Jim and myself going, this is a very, very important thing for our county, for our children, for um, business to have. And we're doing what we can to put a, a committee together to look at what forms are best for us to use, what's viable within the funds that we have um, to use these funds for broadband. Should we do this? Um, so we're looking at all the aspects of it because it's such an important topic. And with the funds that we have, we could use it for that. And um, Jim if, has... Yeah, if my ahead, Jim, connection try. is stable, I will try to give you three, four words. We had three township supervisors come to us yesterday and say, county, get going, get this done. Um, and we also had a private citizen uh, who lives on the border with uh, between Allegan and Ottawa, on Allegan Road, who said, you know, he's... He's a business guy. He can't conduct his business from his home because of the inadequacy of the internet. And uh, actually, I had a text from him this morning. and say, what's next? What are you guys going to do next? And um, so we call it, we don't call this a study group. We don't call it a work group. We call it an action group um, so that we can, we can put, get the right people, you know, from agribusiness, from uh, local government, uh, from various uh, other industries, from the schools to go find the systems that will wire or satellite our, our county so that we, the county which people are seeking to live in right now, can be part of the world economy. Now, the thing is, it's not as if you have a gripe against the people who represent Allegan County in the legislature, because Mary Whiteford uh, in the House, uh, uh, Steve Johnson has got a little corner up in Whalen, but for the most part, Mary Whiteford in the House and uh, Eric Nesbitt in the Senate have been championing the efforts to get more broadband and of course yes i know technically the problem we've had with jim is not broadband it's bandwidth and that's an entirely different story but yet still dealing with it's not as if you got a complaint with your elected officials immediately the complaint is more up the ladder with these guys well i you know i i'm not you know i have to tell you this we cannot wait to look to Washington or Lansing for answers to help Allegan County. I mean, there's going to be some resources. There's going to be a lot of money coming down the line. We got to figure a way to grab as much of it as we can to get our county involved. And that's why we need this action group. But we also need to reach out to the providers uh, of uh, 
internet service, you know, who are kind of waiting on the sidelines a little bit here to see, you know, what's the next shoe is going to drop. We got to be the one that's going to be the next shoe that's going to drop and go get those small providers. Like I mentioned it before, like Bloomingdale Communications, Great Lakes Energy, uh, Michigan Broadband Services are kind of in the Upper Peninsula, but I think they're looking to the Lower Peninsula because I don't think we can wait for the bigs to figure out that we, we have a worthwhile market. We got to work with the smaller providers, I think, who understand rural areas, who have served rural areas, and who want to expand their service in Allegan County. Uh, and by the way, the broadband worked just fine, Jim. It's it stayed on there <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> well, AT, I'm, I'm not going to mention my no, 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 no. every now and then there's a there's a uh, unstable internet connection. Yeah. So. Uh, the other thing, and then we'll take a break, is the uh, water resource water resource quantity work group. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, Dean, do you want to lead on that, or I can I can go. I gladly will. It ends up that we did a, we did an aquifer study. Ottawa County did an aquifer study. We used the same group as they did, and for the listeners, they were able to find the lakes that are underneath us to say, are they viable? Can we put new subdivisions on them? Um, or do they get refreshed refreshed as they should be? Are you keeping the refreshing area stable? And uh, this work group is to look at how do we keep a constant flow of water so that for, for like um, we, our growth rate has been huge in Allegan, Ottawa counties is huge. Um, what's viable for them? How much water is there? So this work group is gonna look at all what it takes to keep the water, water resources that we have viable. And then there's actually computer programs for cities and townships and counties that they can look at where, where it makes sense to add subdivisions where they shouldn't add subdivisions because there's no water. Or there's a lack of water and it's a very important work group to look at this for the future um, so that we can be a su sustainable county in that area of water which is a huge resource for us let me hold off on the break because i do have a caller wanting to chat with you guys good morning you're on the line with commissioner's story and capping up Oh, good morning mr Seals. good morning mr capping good morning uh, mr story thank you for your service for the people of Allegan County. We old people want to uh, access Lake Michigan, the current South West Park, uh, elderly handicapped can't walk about three quarters of a mile to the beach. And I think you should uh, have the DNR and say Michigan uh, D, the northern portion of the South West Park, Park to the county for a new county park, uh, have local control and so forth. And there's a uh, space available for a Access to the parking lot off of the Hunter Boys and 66th Avenue there and, and Lake Town Fountain is on the west side. I think you should look into that. And uh, we've been found in development for the DNR for the last uh, 30, 40 years. And they just made a big mess out of the South Dutch Hudson State Park. And we've been asking them to build more parking lots for the last two years. And they've done nothing. So, so thank you for your service. Have a good day. Thank you very much for the call. 616-395-1450. Uh, I thought we were done with the Denison property. <laughs> it does squabble <laughs> in Saugatuck, but it looks like that's still going on a little bit. Um, I don't know how to answer that question, frankly. Okay. It's so frustrating for us. Uh, the county, our county uh, invested $400,000 to provide a walkway down to uh, the beach on, uh, in our West Side Park uh, down in Ganges Township. And the high water erosion uh, and storms literally ripped it apart. And, uh, you know, so we're trying to figure out how to recover from that. Uh, we have a passion for those who have um, challenges in walking any distances and who also want to, as they should, enjoy the many miles of beaches that we have in Allegan County. I, I, Dean, I don't know if the Parks Commission you're, you're on has been, been talking about this, but. Um, we have been, and we, we're just frustrated, I guess. I'll just share a quick story, Gary. Um, the commission was taking a tour of the, our parks, and we stopped, and I don't know if you remember this, Jim, but we stopped, walked down our ramp, and there was about three people in wheelchairs that were right next to the sand. And I think one of them even cried. They said, thank you so much for giving us this, that we can be this close to water and sand. This means so much to us. And I know that really touched me as far as the importance of something like yep. that. I know that the Parks Commission has looked at this. We spent so much money and it was simply washed out into the water that we're, we want to find something that's stable, that we know we won't misspend money um, for something of that expense that, that will be stable. 
you know, so we don't know those answers yet. I know we've checked with some engineers as far as what could be next, but, um, and it, it wasn't the wrong move to do, but no one expected what happened and we don't want it to happen again. So we are looking at that listener because we know how important it is to, to your group of people. And, and hopefully some of that money that uh, Governor Whitmer mentioned yesterday, $250 million she wants to allocate from the Federal American Rescue Plans into state parks. But according to the state uh, budget office, there's $264 million worth of uh, repairs that need to be done to the state parks. So we'll see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully there'll be priority with the state parks, not only in Allegan, but Ottawa counties as well. One final thing, gentlemen, I want to touch upon, and I'm going to reference back yesterday. We had uh, Ottawa uh, 58th District Court Judge uh, Brad Canole in on the Ask the Judge segment, and he was talking about getting some of the backlog of jury trials in the district court out of the way now that uh, you know the courts are back open uh that is an issue in terms of the allegan county circuit court and that was addressed in your meeting i believe yesterday about uh, the backlog of jury trial that's been caused by COVID 19 restrictions well yes uh the we were uh we were joined yesterday by uh judge uh robert Kangas, who's our uh, second uh, circuit court judge, Chief Judge Marge Baker, uh, was, was not available. And here's the point. They have something like north of 125 jury trials that have been postponed uh, because of COVID, and now they have to catch up. Now, here's, here's the technical part. Every jury trial requires a pool of jurors that you have to call in, and that, that can sometimes reach up to 90. Well, when you have two circuit judges, not to mention the district judges, uh, conducting jury trials. You have to find a place to adequately space these jurors that you call in for selection. So I got to give a lot of credit to our administrative team. They've, they've looked around the courthouse to find places like the Griswold Auditorium in, uh, upstairs and downstairs, contacted uh, a couple of churches that are near the courthouse where they can you know, remotely uh, put the jurors. And so they're moving forward to conduct those jury trials, but there's a lot of unfinished business that our courts have to catch up on. And Dean, I know you have been in the past very active yes. uh, in giving business to the courts. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would love to hear what you have to say. <laughs> well, simply when you think of 120 back, you know, case backlog, it's staggering. Then to think of that many people to pull for, for juries, this is gonna be a big asset as far as to, I know that they even took I don't know how many people they said it took Jim to actually call jurors to to get a hold of them and to set this up, but it would actually free manpower and ex, you know expedite what's going on. So it's a very important thing to get for them, and that process is on the way, hopefully, to take care of the backlog that they have with jurors. And but just, fi- but just finding the space for those jurors to be in a place where they can get the instructions and be called and asked their questions and and all of the things that you have to do to get a fair trial um, is, has been an administrative nightmare. And we have uh, our new uh, circuit court acting administrator, uh, Jennifer Brink, uh, happily a resident of Fillmore Township. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, uh, that is working on that with our administrative team headed by our administrator, Rob Sauer. Uh, should be a lot of uh, hope. So I, I, I used a reference uh, when I talked to Judge Canole in the Holland situation of it's like an hourglass where, you know, you have a lot in the top, a lot on the bottom, but you have that little, you know, you got to get, you know, get this, let the let the sand, you know, go through that as well. Gentlemen, we are out of time for this particular segment, but it's always been a pleasure to talk about Allegan County activities with commissioners jim story and dean capica gentlemen we wish you and the entire board well over the next month or so thank you for your comments and if all goes well let's do this again in july and if all goes well as well maybe we can be in the studio and chat together instead of having doing this virtually where we have issues with broadband and bandwidth (laughs) (laughs) i'm in the city of holland that's not where it should be happening (laughs) (laughs) gentlemen (laughs) Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on WHTC's Talk of the Town program.